Hello painting people and welcome back to another painting tutorial. This time we're going to tackle the PMDG 737 MGX. In particular we are going to be painting the 700 model in Alaska Airline colors. Um, I've already gone ahead and got a few pictures downloaded uh, from Airliners Net, Plane Spotters Net. Um, went and downloaded a few EPS files which I uh, further edited in Adobe Illustrator to remove some of the background and change the coloring on it and things like that. This is the face for the tail. I've already cut it out of a picture and if we have time at the end I'm going to show you how I did that. Uh, so maybe you can do it on another logo, another aircraft, whatever. And we got the flag that goes on the side of the plane. That flag is already pre-sized for time saving. Alright, um, quick rundown of the the paint kit that they offer for the 700 you have the uh, NGX standard NGX winglet these are texture config files all these are is basically a uh, fallback texture or a fallback uh, meaning if the sim cannot find the texture it's looking for in the folder that you create for your paint it's going to fall back to one of those other locations to look for that file like a virtual cockpit texture things like that stuff that's commonly used and interchange between aircraft. Um, equipment decal. This is going to be uh, the logo that goes on your baggage bins, things like that. Um, if you hear children in the background, I do apologize. I am watching my kids today. Hey. So, a little bit of atmosphere, a little bit of human at element added to the video. Uh, fuselage 1, 2, and 3. This is going to be um, what PMDG has uh, given to you to help you line everything up. As you can see, they're already painted. Why? Because I've already done this tutorial once. Um, Hypercam screwed up on me, had everything out of sync. I'm hoping that I have fixed that issue, but we shall see. Um, so you'll notice Alaska's already on one, two, and three, but we're gonna paste over top of them anyways. Tell texture, um, again, I've already painted it. Uh, but we'll remove what I did and I'll show you how to recreate it. Wing decals, these are going to be like your registration marks under the wings, things of that, like that. Uh, all this is explained in their paint kit PDF file. Um, wing link night, uh, wings, this is going to be just the tops of both wings, flaps, flap guides, um, all that kind of stuff. And then the main file, your fuselage master, which is where you'll be doing all your painting and transferring it to the separate parts. Uh, fuselage virtual cockpit end number. This is gonna be your registration number here. That uh, end number, that's kind of biased for America. Anyways, um, this is where you're going to change. The reason why you get that message is because you don't have the exact font that PMDG used. So that's why you get that message. So you can change it in there. Whatever registration you're going to use, that's what's going to show up on the bottom left of your virtual cockpit. And it will correspond with the INI file. I'll show you how to copy later. So, oh, and they've even included a thumbnail background so we can create our own thumbnail. And uh, that's all part of opening it up in the sim. And we will show you that also later. So let's get started. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the Fuselage Master. Actually, we'll do a quick rundown of the tools in Photoshop. My Photoshop screen is very small. I have it shrunk down to a 720p of resolution. Uh, I believe that is going to solve my issue with Hypercam. Along the top here, this is Adobe Photoshop CS4. It's what I use. Um, I've tried the later, or I've tried all the earlier versions. Uh, I went from Photoshop 7 to this, so it was a big change for me. I had to change the way I'll do a lot of things. Um, file menus, standard. Um, I'm not here to show you how to use Photoshop, um, but I can show you a few of the things that we use commonly when we paint. So. Uh, one thing I did want to show you is I have also installed on here the NVIDIA plugin for, for Photoshop 
And what that allows me to do is uh, it allows me to open up DDS files, edit them, resave them, and like that. But I've had issues with doing that in the past, so it kind of screws things up. Um, ahead of time, I have gone in and made a text file that contains the colors for Alaska. These are the color codes, and I'm going to show you where we'll put those. Uh, these are as close as I can get them to what I see when I look at a picture. So if they're not exact, that's okay. I'm not releasing this. This is just for your knowledge only. Oh, let me see if I have anything else. Open. I do have the uh, Precision Manuals version of Alaska Airlines loaded up on another window over here that you can't see and uh, what it is is uh, I refer to it every now and then because some things you just can't see on pictures like I found out by looking at theirs that there actually is a Dash 700 logo on underneath the nose near the gear door so we'll have to put that on there I didn't know that was there and um, and we're gonna use their INI file which will help us copy over the uh, the common settings that Alaska Airlines uses and that's about it so run down on the tools here uh, same as my last tutorial I'll give you just a brief explanation here you can use an expanded view or smaller view this is going to give us more room in here so we'll leave it like that uh, my layout is under the window tab I have history check, layers check, navigator check, options and tools. Okay, that's what we have over here. This is why I use my layers tab, my history tab, and my navigator, which is how you zoom in and out, move around the picture. Or you can use the tools over here, zoom and move around the picture. This is your uh, move tool, or you can either click on it or hit the V key, that'll bring it up. Uh, rectangular marquee, M is the shortcut key for it click and hold down on anything you see the black arrow in the bottom right corner means there are more than one option for that tool so if you want you can uh, use a cropped uh, tool circle or just the rectangle which is what I use most this is how I leave mine most of the time except for that one there and there uh, this is your polygonal lasso tool uh, what this is is um, it's just another way to select option objects. So uh, you have the lasso, which is freehand. As you draw, it selects the area for you. Or you can use the lasso where it's point, click, 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 and then you can close the polygon. And then the magnetic, you uh, click around as you drag your mouse around. It automatically attaches itself to the edge of a layer or a certain color, or whatever. And you can set the uh, tolerances for that up here. I'll leave it usually right there. Uh, Magic Wand, what this is, is a uh, it's a color selection tool or layer selection tool. Um, I've never used quick selection. Uh, somebody may be able to explain that better in the comments, but uh, Magic Wand, uh, it's very good uh, for selecting certain colors and it's how I pulled that face out of that texture and I'll, I'm going to show you how I use that later. And you said it's, every, th every tool you click, click has a uh, uh, settings up here on top. Crop tool, this is for uh, photos. I'm not going to be using that today. Paint dropper. I don't actually use this tool. You can, but I don't actually use it. Um, I usually just click on the color here and as you can see you automatically get a paint dropper. You can change the colors that way. So, I won't be using that one. Uh, healing brush, this is a really cool tool for uh, fixing blemishes on photos and blemishes on your paint if you try to import over a photo reel section you can you can clean it up get rid of sun glare things like that it's a pretty neat tool it's like a regular airbrush you can set the sizes here and um, and all that uh, pencil tool uh, pencil or your brush tool which is like an airbrush set the opacity and flow of the airbrush here uh, brush size uh, or just your pencil tool which is a hard edge tool, uh, no anti-aliasing and uh, no smooth edges with that. Stamp tool, clone stamp, um, again is good. Use these two and use it in conjunction with your uh, your little band aid there, and uh, it, it helps you a lot on cleaning up cleaning up old photos or a messed up logo that you want to fix. I uh, don't use this tool, which is the history brush tool. 
erasers okay I don't use it a whole lot um, paint bucket we're gonna use it today and then you have a gradient tool we can use I can show you how to use that but we're I don't think we'll be using it today that's good for making shadows like that things like that blur and smudge and sharpen uh, we're not gonna be using that either that's more for photo editing uh, sponge we're not gonna be using it we will be using the pen tool um, I'll give you a pretty brief and slightly detailed rundown of how to use that tool uh, text we're going to be using that today that's for typing our registration marks and all that kind of stuff you set your settings here or after you type it you can change it over here which we'll use this one more often this is your direct select this is for working with the pen tool it selects your points that you add and you can change your curves and things like that this is for drawing lines straight lines rectangles you can also uh, make them vectors uh, which work with the pen tool and all that kind of stuff. So it's really neat. Uh, you can add arrows, arrowheads, it's, uh, if you're doing like overwing exits, things of that nature. Uh, everything below there I don't really use except for the hand tool, but the only time I'll use the hand tool is when I'm panning around my picture and uh, you just use the space bar. Click and hold down on your space bar and uh, that lets you click and move around the and thing instead of having to hit H and then back to whatever you were doing. So these are uh, foreground and background colors. They're interchangeable. You can do a quick select and uh, paint simple a color or whatever you want to do with it. Um, across to the right side over here is our navigator. The little mountains. Click the small mountains to zoom out. Click the big mountains to zoom in. Simple. And you'll have a percentage here and you'll see that in action later. History tool is very handy. So if you're doing a lot of stuff and you get done with it and you just don't like the way it looks, you can go back in your history and remove it all out. It's kind of like undo, but it's undo up to 20 steps ago. So it's really, really nice undo tool. Layers. This is very important. We're going to be using that mostly today. I didn't mean to do that. There. Uh, the layer tool is very important, and I'll show you how we use it today. That's how we're going to navigate around our PSD files. Then you have your channels layer. That's for doing our alphas and uh, masks. Um, the only time, I don't think we're going to be editing any alphas because uh, PMDG has already done that for us. So. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and stop part one here. It's kind of more or less an introduction to get you started. And uh, we'll start part two with uh, opening up the master fuselage and start throwing some paint down. I'll see you in a sec.